you're looking at a lost city. No, not Atlantis, but rather a city lost to time and a changing landscape. This is Baia, once considered the Las Vegas of nearby Naples and Pompeii in Italy, where the rich and famous of the Roman Empire liked to party. Today, it's an archaeological dive park just outside of Naples. But between 41 and 54 AD, this site right here that you're looking at was likely a summer villa belonging to the Emperor Claudio. And this is one of his marble headboards, which would have been attached to a lounge chair in a grand room. In fact, here is a rendering to give you a better idea of what it would really look like. And while these statues are impressive, these are replicas. The only replicas that are on site, the originals, are at a nearby museum. So why is all of this underwater? It's due to a nearby volcano. The term is... Bradizismo. Yeah, the, the reason why the ruins are underwater, because in this area there is a, a phenomenon called Bradizismo, uh, which is a slow movement of the surface of land upwards and downward. This movement is very slow and constant and it's due to a volcano which is very close to here called Solfatara. This volcano is still active, it's much more powerful than the other famous volcano Vesuvio, the one who destroyed Pompeii. And this one here is one of the few super volcanoes we have on the planet. My fortune is calm. <laughs> <laughs> the last eruption was 39,000 years ago. That's Ornelia, the manager of Sabaya, a group that makes sure that divers and snorkelers who want to explore the site understand the site itself. That starts with an hour-long class before even gearing up. It took hundreds of years for this area to sink while people went about their daily lives. The area sank rather slowly, so the residents removed what was valuable to them. What remains today, the statues and the marble, were quite common back then and were left behind on purpose. So for hundreds of years, this site continued to sink while residents seemingly forgot what was there. That is until it was discovered by a military pilot in 1956. Excavations then started in the 1980s and in 2002, it finally became an official archeological park. But there's more history to uncover, literally on this site. So as we arrive on the site, the first thing we have to do is to remove the sand. So I think for a guest, a diver, who the first time see us to, to show, is like, <laughs> wow, no, something, and you show slowly, yeah. and something come out, is, uh, I think, really beautiful. And it is. The reason for the sand is because it actually protects the site. It keeps algae from growing on the mosaics. You're looking at our second dive site, which was believed to be a men's club and the only mosaic ever found in the area depicting humans, considered a huge find by archeologists. This site also revealed rooms of terracotta floors believed to be a part of steam rooms, as well as more marble and pieces of pillar. Now you saw a glimpse of this at the top of my story, but this mosaic is my very favorite, thought to be a dining area of sorts. But something a little less appetizing is that the site is being impacted by climate change. Just a bit the temperature of the water. Mm -hmm. um, now we are getting uh, summers very hot and more frequent. In the past was maybe one summer hot and then the other normal. Now every every summer very very hot and the, in the summer in shallow water the temperature is close to 29 degrees Celsius. Mm. In fact, we die with a shorty, you know, 28, 29. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, according to Ornelia. It makes summers longer and warmer for tourists. However, the downside is that the fall brings more stormy weather, which can build up sand around the site. The site has made it hundreds of years in the state we see it now. But between the warmer weather and Bradisismo, we could see the site change a lot in the coming years especially because the nearby volcano is causing the site to slowly rise once again, meaning in a few hundred years, this will all be back on the surface. What do you think the value is of someone being able to enjoy and learn about the ruins and about 
history, whether it's Roman or Greek for, or... For me, it's very high value. For me, it's really unbelievable. It's crazy. So even if you are not so passionate about archaeological stuff, as you arrive here, wow, you really, <laughs> you really appreciate, enjoy. But only if we remember to cover the mosaics back up before the next diver comes through. So I know you're not supposed to, but how badly did you want to take something <laughs> from there? And, and there or, was, or did you maybe? There was no, I didn't take anything. You don't take anything from a, a dive park. Uh, or typically when you dive in general, you don't want to take things from the ocean. Right. But there was this really beautiful piece of tile that was all alone by itself. And it was white with like this mm -hmm. beautiful blue painting on it. And I like picked it up and I looked at it and I was like, man, this is so cool. And I was like, but you belong here. So see, someone look else around, can see you. Look around, put it in your scuba pocket. <laughs> Just, do, do you have a pocket in those yeah, yeah. Uh, scuba diving So yeah. I usually keep uh, satchels. I usually keep a knife in there. That's in case something happens, you need to like break free. But I'll also put plastic in there because unfortunately, mm -hmm. even a site like that with currents and everything, there's plastic everywhere. Oh, so plastic. I was picking up bags oh. and trash, and I was just putting them in my pocket. You, you put the um, you put the sand back. That that's good, and it, and it protects it. And they and let me do it too, which was mm -hmm. cool. They were like, Yeah, cool. you want to do it? Takes less work. For yes, us. actually, <laughs> the best way to remove um, overgrown seaweed on ancient Roman sites that are underwater is you take a pair of Caesars. I see. I see what you did there. That was actually pretty good. <laughs> it was pretty funny. You said you had a knife, and then I, yeah. the, the brain started going. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Julius Caesar's whatever. He is what he was referring to. There was one other thing that kind of got left out of that piece, and mm -hmm. that is the archaeological park. While it has, we did two sites, has seven, there's also more like artifacts and things outside of the mm -hmm. park's perimeter. And I had this really cool dive master. Um, he was from France and he was like, can you stick around? Because if you stay another day, I'll take you outside of the, the park and we'll go look at all the other places. Did you get to do it? No. Oh. <laughs> I had to take, by the way, this also didn't make it in the story. I was in Rome. This okay. was outside of Naples. Yeah. So I woke up at 5 a.m., I took two trains, Jeez. a bus, and then I walked about half a mile with all of my scuba gear in order to get to the site oh. on time, and then I had to go back. But on my way back, there wasn't a bus. So I was able to talk a dive master into giving me a ride for 50 euros. And well, cool. uh, on our way out, he's like, you had pizza here, because it was in Naples. And I was like, no, I haven't had pizza. I don't have time, like I gotta get back. And he was like, we're gonna go get pizza and then you can go. And yeah. I was like, okay, and it was the best pizza of my life and it's a great story. I'm just gonna home. choose to believe it's that you were in full scuba gear the entire time <laughs> on the train, yeah. on the bus, eating my pizza the entire time. I'm like, hey guys, <laughs> let's go scuba diving. Well, thanks for you know watching the story with piece. me, talking about it with me. Yeah. I'm obviously geeking out hard because I was really excited, but we do have other cool stories after the break, so stick with us and we'll talk about those too.